Hey people, Anthony, 4B4Diesel. Well, this is a bit of an urgent warning for everybody that owns or is ever going to buy a used motor vehicle. Uh, we've just had someone with a petrol engine, V6, um, completely shag out, okay? Blocked all pickups. I'm just going to quickly run through some of the precautions you should take if you're looking at a used vehicle. Um, and of course, this goes for any make or model, really. You can have blocked all pickups on petrols or diesels both for different reasons we've explained it in the videos it's really important you subscribe have the bell on i know so, there's so many people i know oh they just haven't got time you know they're busy they haven't got that five or ten minutes a day whatever the video is for the day today was actually two minutes until i decided to uh do this this is fresh okay so the other thing i just want to mention quickly um parts monday the 23rd in the morning from 7 30 a.m we are on deck now with, uh, you know, this oil pickup situation, obviously the engine oil, it, the engine, it needs lubrication. So if the oil's not getting to the engine, it's going to cause permanent damage. Now, here we're just going to take a quick look at three engines and use them as examples on what you could do as checks and prevention before you commit to a purchase of a used vehicle. Or perhaps, and some after that, some things you should do as soon as you get it home. Quite obviously, for all the regular viewers, they can see this is one of our vehicles, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know what's going to, the result's going to be. So if you're looking at a used vehicle, now you look at our, one of our playlists, vehicle inspection, service inspection, it's called. If you don't know what I mean, that is on YouTube. That's on our YouTube channel. So you go, you click on, you go to your YouTube on your phone and you click on subscriptions. You find 4 Before Diesel. You should have 4 Before Diesel and 4 Before Adventures there. All right, they should be your favourite channels, of course. Of course, that's what I'm going to think. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. You click four before diesel, and then it opens up our sort of page. And then somewhere you see, you click playlists. Then you scroll down, and there's your playlist, your subheading with all that groups of videos. Really important. You're watching all the vehicle inspection. You'll get to know the vehicles really well. Okay. Now, this is something we don't really talk about too much in the vehicle inspection. Um, we've talked about it in videos randomly here or there, which is why it's important. There's lots of information included in videos that might not be what you wanted, but this is the channel you just really want to subscribe, watch and listen, because there's just these, they tell me like gold nuggets pop up every now and then. So if you're buying a used vehicle, you're going to be looking at all those usual sorts of things we talk about. And without getting too boring, because we're not going to talk about that, one of the most important things on the vehicle obviously the engine is one of the most expensive components this thing right here okay so what looks after the engine quite simple engine oil for your lubrication coolant the cooling system for obviously keeping it running at the right temperature and um, filters to keep the oil and the fuel going through it clean because it runs on fuel and air right that's what it runs on fuel and air Okay, so air filters is important, so you could have a look in the air box. I'm not going into this too much in this video, but you have a look in the air box and make sure it's all clean on the clean side, filters look reasonable, that sort of thing. Uh, gives you an idea of the maintenance. You can look at the condition of the coolant if you know what you should be looking. How do you get familiar? You watch our videos and you see what's normal. It doesn't matter if you've got a Nissan or a Hyundai or whatever, you see the coolant bottle, yeah, but it's clear. That's what colour the coolant should be. It starts looking a bit, how you going? Guess what? How you going? Not good. Right, so... If you want to look at the engine and go, well, you know, this has got a service, you oh, I lost the books sort of story, whatever they tell you. They go, oh, yeah, mate, I service it every 5,000 kilometres, right? Well, this will tell a story, right? So what we're going to do, one of the first things you would do, you could just take the cap off. It'll give you a fair indication, especially on the V6. On the V6, the alloy V6, right, obviously the, the um, over this side's where your oil cap's over here. When you take it off, it's got an extended alloy tube and you can see it tells a story looking down that tube. So you look down there with a the light, you'll see the chain and everything. If it's a nice shiny alloy colour, it's a really good one. If it's a bit brown, well, that's what you get because the petrol in petrol engines, the petrol contaminates the oil and it puts the stain on everything, right? So that tells a story. So you've got a bit of colour in it, not a big deal, right? If it starts getting really dark or thick and there's a build-up, that's where you've got to start to look really closely and understand what you're looking at. Now, if you look at ours, all you're going to see is dust, right? So this is not what this is really about. The point is, look in the middle of the hole there. It looks like a new oil cap if you look in there really closely. So you can see the numbers on there. That's what you want to see. Don't worry about the dust and dirt. And I don't even like, I'm just going to gently, I don't want to bang that around. I just want to gently put that back on because that thing is filthy, okay? 
and you don't want any of that dust. And that's quite simply because we've done an oil change and we haven't washed the engine. Okay, so from the bit of oil on our hands, so like that bit there, and you can go like this, but guess what? There's a residue there and that's what's happened there. Just from the little bit of oil on our hands and sitting that oil cap up there, there's a bit of dust you might notice. That's what that's all about. Now you might have went, oh, but wouldn't I put that anywhere near my engine? That's not what the video is about, okay? Trust me, nothing fell off. I did it gently, it's beautiful. But what you should probably do is clean that cap, make sure none of that dirt. After your oil change, use the degreaser, watch the engine washing videos. This is what I'm talking about. It all comes together. This is just one piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle. I'm gonna chuck in a few photos so you see what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna randomly put in these photos throughout the video, and I have already, and I'll keep continue to do so, so you can see the situation with the block door pickup. It's the end of the engine. I can't tell you why yet, we can't go into detail. We might have videos showing you what the conclusion is, what engine components were damaged and why. There might even, we might even have a video going through what, the, what are the options? Do you get a rebuild? Do you get a secondhand engine? If you do, what checks should you do? What maintenance resealing components you should do before you put it in? And of course, should you just get a new engine? There's a lot of options, okay? It's not gonna be in this video. Do you get my drift? Look under the oil cap. If it's all brown, it's all caked up and it's all gluggy and stuff like that, not good, right? Not a good start. A vehicle like that, I would wanna see, get the sump off, <coughs> excuse me, get that sump off and have a look at the oil pickup before you even purchase the vehicle. Now, another telltale sign. Again, our vehicle's here. You're not going to see anything here. You're going to go, mate, what's going on with this guy and his oil chain? He's got no oil in there, right? Now, see, it's all golden because that's how we roll, mate. 5,000 K. That's what you're going to see on ours, right? Now, I'm just going to do something and just go, who do any magic, right? So it's all clear and clean. What I want to point out is, see, there's not a stain, a black mark, a brown mark, anything on the dipstick. Now, a petrol engine needs the 5,000 K oil changes just as much or even more as the diesel. Some people... They've got a complete misconception about, oh, you know, uh, the diesel, you know, you've got to do 5,000 K oil changes. Glad I got the petrol. Well, you know what? I'm not here to bag out petrols. They're all very good engines, but they've all got their put pitfalls and you need to understand them all. And what we talk about relates to all engines. That's why I'm saying this video is for everyone and this channel is for everyone. It might be called 4v4 diesel because we're mainly working on diesels. You know, we're specializing in Land Cruiser, Prados, Hiluxes, that sort of thing but it's all relevant. Okay, so if you see a stain on the dipstick, it's a sign that it has missed some oil changes, that sort of thing, right? Even every 10,000 K oil changes, you're not really gonna get that unless it's been sitting around short trips and that 10,000 K's happened over a year or 18 months, right? My rule, oil goes out every 5,000 K's or six months, whichever comes first. Now, there's exceptions to that, like the winter replacement injector rule. If you're doing high Ks and you're doing 10,000 Ks in two months, just do it every 10,000 Ks because you're doing high Ks, like highway Ks, do that sort of Ks, you're on the motorways, you're doing the engine's warm, consistent running. Every time you do cold starts, it's running rich, there's more fuel contaminating the oil, it's the whole stop start thing is not that. So if you've gone, if it's you or the vehicle you purchased, the previous owner, oh, you know, I did it every uh, 10,000 Ks, no problem, it's stamped in the book. Look at the dates in the book. If it's 18 months, too long, not good. You need to look under this cap. You need to look at the dipstick and depending on what you see there. And in the service book, whether you need to, in, it's good in the 1KD, you just drop the oil, you can check the oil pickups. Nothing to do with oil changes in the 1KD. It's to do with the injector seats. Completely different, no problem there. People just don't know and they just don't get changed. The 1KD is a very predictable engine. You know how reliable it is. And if you're the one in 20,000 or whatever it is, you know what could happen and there's ways to avoid that and there's solutions to every problem we've got. That's what we specialize in. We've got that in place. Let's just go to another vehicle to have a bit of a look. Yucky, 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 right? Here we go, the Hilux. What do you think we're going to see? I reckon less dust because I've washed it since the last oil change and look, see the difference with the amount of dirt build up. But look in the cap there. What are we seeing? doesn't look as schmick as the other one, does it? I think it's just, I'm just looking at it myself actually. I think it's just a plastic molding, but the point is, if you start seeing yucky looking stuff under that, that's a bit of a sign, right? And when you do that, it's just, you know, it's just nice and tight by hand, so it doesn't fall off, don't leave it loose. I'm gonna get the dipstick out. Where are we gonna be for the dipstick? Let's come around here a little bit. 
Focus. Okay, right. So I'll just get the dipstick out from out here. It's always careful not to short it on the battery, but I'm going to bring it over here. And you can have a look at our no oil situation in this one, KD, as well. Oh, look, no oil again. No, it's gold, and that's how we roll, right? Is this crazy or what? I'm telling you, look at the dipstick, right? Shiny, no staining. But I've got to tell you, you're not going to see much in the diesels once you wipe the dipstick. The telltale sign is you look at the oil and go, if it's really black on the dipstick, mate, it's missed some oil changes. Because what you're looking at there is black oil. It's not going to really, it shouldn't stain the dipstick. If it does, it's really, really extreme, okay? Now, you might be surprised. Stick around because we're going to get to the 1GD. And that should be the cleanest, right? The newest vehicle, only 30,000 Ks. Let's have a look because you might be surprised. Hope you're ready for it. Um, you get my drift. So the diesels, it's soot loading in the oil, making it black. That doesn't really stick too much to your dipstick. You'll get it inside the engine, that sort of thing. So you'll know more when you get the, you know, that say you take the valve cover off, you'll know more about the oil changes, that sort of thing. With the petrol engines, look, it just stains easy. That petrol that contaminates the oil, it's nasty stuff compared to diesel. Diesel is just kind of like... It's kind of like oil and oil, big deal. And the black soot, you know, it's a soot loading in the oil. Um, if you obviously, and the way it happens in 1KD is quite simple, right? How does the soot get into the 1KDs? Who can put up your hand? Who can tell me, right? That's right, through the EGR system because it's exhaust gas recirculation. That exhaust gas is in the combustion. Boof, some of it blows past the rings and whatever into the crankcase. Butter bing, it's in your engine, it's in your engine oil, contaminating your engine oil. If you don't have any EGR flow, for example, then in a 1KD, because they run so clean with the common rail injectors, they work really well, you're going to have really clean oil, and that's simple as that, right? If you've got a little bit of EGR flow, or a fair, you know, it's all relevant. That varying EGR flow, depending how much it is, is how clean or dirty your oil is going to be. We want to avoid the situation of what's happened to a young fellow at the moment. He's only had his Prado about a, less than two years, one to two years, okay? And it's bye-bye V6 engine, it's finished. And it could have really been avoided, I've got to say, if he is, if from, look, let's just say that, um, let's just say the it comes down to the parenting a little bit as well. So we've got to make sure we're trying to guide our kids the right way, correct? So it's my responsibility to do my part with my kids and even I'm going to help helping you guys out and your kids as well, hopefully, right? Um, but, you know, the parent, monkey see, monkey do. So the parents got to be doing the right thing. They've got to understand they need to be subscribed and watching and listening to all these videos to avoid those major catastrophes, all the little ones that can just make it unreliable and cause you to stress out a lot, right? We're here, we give you the genuine, accurate information. Let's get over to the 1GD and see if I can't surprise you. Yeah, 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 you can say I talk too much. Doesn't matter, talking underwater with a mouthful of marbles. Let's have a look at this oil cap, just as an example. 30,000 kilometer vehicle that is exactly one year old. Let's just have a look, all right? Down there, you're gonna get less dust around the oil cap as well. But that gives you a really good example. See in there, you can see how things are meant to be. That is just Mickey Mouse clean, actually, and look at that. That's probably because the last place I went was on a trip, and when it comes back, it gets a nice good clean up, all right? So let's get that back on. Oh, happy days, I don't know. That, I just want to redo that actually. You know when you just sort of not have that just sort of went Yeah, so it doesn't go it doesn't go many turns compared to the one KD, but anyway. So that just comes up. Look at that, I'll show you like from there. On, off, and it's like half a turn. There you go. There you go. So that went from six to twelve. Alright. And there's that dirty rag again just to make a bit of dust. But you want to see the dipstick, right? Well, let's have a look, right? 29,700 kilometers. Let's get it out. Here it comes. Look at that, huh? Hey? And this is what I'm talking about, right? The 1KD is an awesome engine. We know it well. We have all the solutions, right? But you know what? This thing, well, this one will be all right because highway K's only. Uh, well, <laughs> no guarantees, but it's got a long warranty. Now, wipe the dipstick. You saw how black it was. That was enough. But the point is, look. See how black the oil was, that tell, that says, hey, this hasn't had an oil change for a while. It's got a fair soot loading, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a, a, a the chemist getting a, you know, accurate measurement, you know, it's actually just having a look and a bit of a, you know, if you see black on the dipstick, it's quite dirty oil. Now, 
This one, even after an oil change, it'll still have some black in there. I'll tell you what I'll do. If I remember, I'll do another video. After the 30,000K service, we'll pull out the dipstick and we'll see if it's anywhere near as clean as the 1KDs that get looked after, right? They all get looked after the same. Happy days, more or less, you know, whatever. I mean, we miss an oil change every now and then on the big trips. We do, you know, 10 or 12 or 13,000 Ks in any of the vehicles in particular. But generally, what we see, we pull dipsticks on 1KDs and we see clean. Now, what I want to point out, though, is, as you can see, the surface is clean. There's no staining, right? That's what you really want to see on any dipstick. Get that back in there. You notice it was down just a little bit as well. Well, that's, you know, the standard amount of oil when you put it in there. Really, when you, when you, you know, that's what you need to do. The vehicle's under warrant needs to have the correct amount of oil in the engine. I'll uh, over and engineer the 1KDs because I've been around longer than them. And uh, I've got a bit of experience with them. So we'll put in a little bit more and they might be a little bit over and uh, it's not a big deal. So the whole point of the story is to conclude we're nearly done here, all right? Did you, I bet you got learn a few things out of this video. But my point is, I don't care. Look, more and more these days, people are buying vehicles with 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 kilometers or even more, and they expect to not have issues. Well, the first thing is, you can expect that with Toyotas if it's been looked after correctly and all the maintenance. If my maintenance program's been followed by someone, you can buy that vehicle from them and you can expect to not have problems. If you buy a vehicle with 300,000 Ks, ballpark average, either side of there, and from Joe Blow from Mexico, and he doesn't watch any video, I'm even as a poet and I didn't know it, right? You just don't know what you're gonna, you're gonna get. The wheel bearings are gonna be due. You're gonna have uh, maybe problems with the engine oil leaks. Injectors are gonna be due. BFE is gonna be due. Water pumps leaking. All the usual stuff. The hard fuel hose is about to crack. The squeak in the exhaust. You know, the crack bush. You know all the stuff we talk about. But if people stay on top of it and just nail it as they go, you won't have any problems. But this is separate to the normal maintenance. This is just, you're trying to work out if somebody's missed services, right? A stamp in the book's one thing. You've got to look at the kilometres. You've got to look at the date. You've got to work out if that's genuine. Is it, a, is it a real workshop? Is it genuine? You know what I mean? So just think about that if you're buying a used vehicle. This is imperative. So there's, it's, and I want to go a bit further. It's not just the engine oil. It's also the transmission fluid because that's the second, first or second most expensive component. The two most expensive important components, engine and the automatic transmission, if that's what it is. If it's a manual or a clutch or whatever, well, it's all old school and you're doomed anyway. So, no, 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 look, we love manuals, but it is old school and there's the clutch. You never know when it's going to let go. You've got another bearing there. Look, the autos are really reliable. That's why we use the autos. They are really reliable and you're pretty well just reliable you you know you haven't got a clutch or a gearbox that's about to let you down when you know by surprise so chuck in a few photos chuck here and there hope you like those so what's happened to v6 right it's uh yeah it, it's he's done some reasonable servicing since he's had it but the, i think the point that got missed here is when you go and pick up a used vehicle you do these checks first when you're looking at vehicles so i'm showing you look at the cap look at the dipstick Understand the words I've spoken to you. Listen to this video again. You can watch it if you like, but it's mainly about listening, right? This is a podcast, whatever you like, right? What, I don't even know what a podcast is. People go, you should do podcasts. Well, this is a podcast, okay? Right? This is what I'm doing. We're doing this. Anyway, check those caps. Check those dipsticks, okay? And then, for peace of mind, when you get the vehicle home, if it's a 1KD, you can check through the sump pole on all the 1KDs. You can see enough of the oil pickup to know what's going on. You don't have to pull the sump off. But on some of the V6s, you need to pull the sump off to see it. You might be able to see it a bit on some of them and not on others. But you've got to work out if it's enough. How, you tell me, $18,000 for a brand new V6 all alloy engine, right? The 1KDs are about half that price. Ballpark numbers, about, right? Double for the V6 if it goes bad. Now, coolant. Let's go to coolant, right? Coolant mixes. Real, wrong old coolant equals corrosion and problems in your engine. The coolant protects not only your cooling system, your heater core, your Welsh plugs, and all this sort of thing. Head gaskets. It's an all-alloy engine. It can corrode away and get leaks in places that you can't fix. And once again, to fix it, it's an engine or it's a major repair. They also have head problems. You've got to keep everything in Mickey Mouse condition 
You've got to understand the pitfalls. The pitfalls of the V6. They get oil leaks. They do. They get valve cover leaks. They get timing cover leaks. They get the front seal on the crankshaft. You know, the, tom the timing case, whatever you want to call it. The crankshaft, the rear seal, you know, the rear main, right? These are the seals that generally leak. And by changing the oil regularly, not only does it lubricate and protect the engine, it also helps those steel seals stay fresh and soft, that sort of thing, right? You know the oil additive, I'll put the additive in the oil to rejuvenate the seals. Well, I don't know if that works or not, but you know what does work? Just keeping clean oil. What did I say at the start? 5,000 kilometers. Petrol, even more important than diesel to do that. So if you thought you got, oh, I'm glad I got the V6, I don't have to do the, you're dreaming. It's a common problem. And this is not a Prado problem or a V6 problem. It can happen on a Corolla, it can happen on a Camry, it can happen on a Nissan Pulsar. Mate, I had a Nissan Pulsar that somebody didn't do all changes, came in on his mate's trailer, wasting everyone's time because he wouldn't spend money on services, pulled the valve cover off, cleaned it all up, scraped it all off the cams, pulled the sump off, cleaned it all out, cleaned the oil pickup. He came, he had the oil light on, rings me up, yeah, side of the freeway, yeah, don't drive it. Okay, there's an, this is why you watch to the end because haven't I been yakking the whole time? Yak, 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 yakety yak. Correct, right? That is correct. But have I said yet? If the oil light comes on, it's probably too late, so avoid the situation. But if the oil light comes on in any engine, stop immediately. Stop the vehicle. You can check the oil level. If it's These old cars used to burn oil. It could be a low oil level because as they get kilometres on them, they wear, and they're specifying all these thin oils, and these car, a lot of cars, a lot of vehicles could use oil. It's not that anymore. These are Toyotas. They don't use oil. If you get an oil light come on, you're probably in trouble, but the best thing you can do to avoid that $20,000 bill or 25, if you want a new V6 installed into a Prado, you know, subscribe, turn the bell on, listen to what I'm telling you. There's going to be more things. I can't fit a lifetime of experience. There's so many things we warn you about, try and help you with, right? The reason I'm doing this, it's happened to someone. We wish it didn't. We're going to help them out best we can. Look at the we haven't, I haven't even seen the vehicle yet. I've heard about how it's running. I've got some of the information. So what happened initially is it was a crankshaft position code or something. I can't even remember, but basically retarded, which straight away went, what about this oil pickup? This is a Toyota. It's not going to be sensors. It's going to be, you know, the engine's dragging the camshaft or something, or the camshaft sensor's dirty because there's something going on the engine because it's filthy because it's missed oil changes or something like that. And then you start doing your oil changes non-edit okay you start doing the oil changes and maybe sometimes that can loosen up all the crud that's in there right so you've really just got to be all over it i mean you buy a used vehicle especially a petrol i've got i'm going to say especially a petrol the one kd is much more predictable yep we know it's a good engine it's a great engine really it really is it is so easy to work on and I know some people are going, you dream, and it looks like so much. But look, it's all a matter of perspective. If you watch a lot of videos, you'll get familiar with this engine like I am. To me, a 1KD, and the people that work you know, with me, what, what we do, these are so easy to work on. And it's all a matter of because that's what we do. Now, when we get a lot of 1GDs, when, you know, who the big T, when they finish giving 10-year DPF warranties and con and everyone into you know you need to uh oh you know get the serve, cap price service and all that which that'll never end right and then they've got you in there everybody's in there and that's fine we're not complaining really we just think it's a bit really you got sucked into that type thing you know really did you see so you go okay anyway that's another story um when we eventually see more of them and we can be bothered with all the problems they have you know all the replacing and cleaning dpfs and you know, the timing chain issues. Let's not even go there, yeah, you know. I mean, good, there's positives about the engine. You know, the injector seats, they, they're not there. You're not going to get that situation. When the seats leak, you're not going to get a blocked door pickup, okay? So that the, the design is totally different. You're not going to have that issue. The seats are going to last longer. They're a different design. They're a bit thicker, pretty much like the V8s. Probably the same part number I haven't checked. So on the 200 series, they're thicker. They're probably going to last longer before they get blow by. But injectors on 200s, again, you need to replace those. I'm really having a talk today, aren't I? But um, that's what we need to do. Anyway, that's what we need to do. And I've got this K-on bottle opener on the uh, antenna at the front here. 
few sharp edges, so I'm just giving that a clean up while I talk to you. But you get my drift, so first thing I need to do, really, I couldn't help myself. Just gonna go over it and over it and over it again, to be quite honest, right? So check your cap, check your dipstick. Right, if you think you're okay and you've watched all those videos in the playlist, you know, inspection service videos, you can service your own vehicle, you can check your own oil pickups. You know, you might even want to check that oil pickup before you commit. If you want to be really cautious and you've got the time and you don't mind, say, look, I want to get the vehicle on a hoist, I want to get the oil out, and I want to see that oil pickup, because that is a massive problem. If you get an engine and you've got a really blocked oil pickup, doesn't matter if it's the petrol or the diesel, that's the one you want to run from, or you want to get at half price, allowing for an engine. You might be okay. That's the gamble, right? That's the one you've got to work out. Um, but say you commit to it and you haven't checked the oil pickup, you drive the vehicle home, you park it in the driveway, and you drop the oil out, and you look at the oil pickup, you look at the cap again, you look at the dipstick, you look in the engine, stick a mirror down there, get a camera, some cheap camera, bore scope, whatever you want to call it. You get heaps of cheap stuff that do the job these days, you know. Our, you know, the big C word, you know, the big C word we don't like, you know, but cheap rubbish, it'll probably work for you for a couple of months to have a look. Anyway, and then you'll go, mate, rubbish, that didn't work. You know how it works, everyone's having a laugh now. Yeah, who stunk around to the end? Amazing. Anyway, uh, I'm stuck in around, I'm sticking around. So my point would like to be at this point for the people that didn't stick around or you did the first time. If I made the time to speak to you, can't you at least have the courtesy to make the time to listen. Don't you reckon that'd be reasonable? I reckon anyway. Reckon, there you go. And I don't care about reckoning, okay? So, you know, it'll be another video on solutions. This is more about to really get you thinking what to check. Any any components you can look at in the engine, any way you can get in there. If you want to take the oil cap, stick a camera down in, through in the valve cover, like, you know, on the V6, looking down that oil filler thing, that'd be good. Um, having a look at the quality, the top the oil and the dipstick, but not just what's on the dipstick. When it, I've seen it many times on a petrol engine, not a diesel, when there's lots of oil changes being missed or a few, you know, it's hard to know exactly how many, but when that oil quality hasn't been kept right, you will see a brown stain on the dipstick. Now, people that have got a petrol engine that watch this video, they're going to go check their dipstick because they've been a bit tight and they've been trying to do it themselves, but they went, no, I reckon only needs doing every two years. They're going out to their dipsticks and they're going to go out there and they're going to go, oh no. And what they're going to do now, they're going to clean them. This is why you stay till the end. They're going to go and clean them and then they go, oh, this engine's about to blow up. What is it, 18? It can't be. They're going to ring Toyota and Toyota's going to go, 18 grand and six weeks wait. They're going to go, oh no. Plus I've got to get it put in, plus all the other bits and pieces, 25 grand. They're going to go, oh. and guess what? There's going to be a whole heap of V6 products for sale. Okay? So they're going to be going cheap. And the ones with the full service history book or the receipts for the oil because they've been doing it themselves and they say, yep, I watch Anthony's videos. Look at this. Look at my cap. Look at my dipstick. Let's drop the oil out and have a look at the oil pickup. I want to sell you the car. That's the car you buy, right? So everybody should be on channel. But you know what? Only the people that want to be smart, that want to think, that want to avoid problems and not end up in that situation are still here. I reckon I've yacked enough. Yak, yak, yakety yak, like I said at the start of the video. If you do need any parts, Monday the 23rd, 7.30 a.m., get it done as soon as possible. Let's wrap it all up by 11 a.m. so we can get all those kits packed and sent. We'll be flat out texting, packing and sending. That's what we do Monday morning. I'm here. I'm taking all the inquiries. Please watch the video, latest injector kit information from the 30th September so you know how it all works. Um, there's a playlist called How to Buy My Kits. Check that out so you know how it works so you're not wasting time asking this and that. So all you need to say, hey, Ed, I've got a 2008 Hilux. I would like an injector kit. My name is, full name, delivery address, vehicle registration number and kilometers. We don't normally need the VIN number. I will ask for that if I need it, like it says in the message. But please don't forget those details, registration number and kilometers. Every Monday morning, except for the ones that I say, not this Monday morning, in videos and or our Facebook groups and pages. So I'll try and pop uh, that photo in the video in a few places as well. And uh, hopefully this one, a few people watch it and listen and learn and we save at least a few engines. So thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Smash the like button. How about it? What can we put at the end for those people that made it? Don't worry about my engine. My all pickups definitely clear. That's what I want to see in the comments. 
for the people that I know went to the end, right? Because if you are at the end, we already know you're the people that listen and you're not going to have any of these problems. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, whatever it might be. Guess what? I'm out of here. See ya.